Hello everyone. Today I'd like to talk a little about the so-called black legends of the Catholic Church, what they were and how they got their name. These are events, or rather a series of events, that the world likes to point the finger at in an attempt to prove that the Catholic Church is flawed or even bad. This is mostly done today by secularists and the media who like to disparage Catholic history. Also in this video I'd like to discuss the three TV miniseries we made for EWTN on the so-called Black Legends. These programmes are known as the Black Legend Trilogy. The Black Legends being the Crusades, the Inquisition and the Reformation. EWTN are broadcasting them at the moment and for the next few weeks in the USA and the Reformation series in Great Britain. The Black Legend is the name the Spanish call the negative depictions of the Spanish Inquisition for they believe they are inaccurate and unfair. We have used the name for our three mini-series. Today let's have a look at the Crusades. They are often depicted as violent episodes of European expansionism where warmongering nobles and landless younger sons of the nobility use their power to conquer peaceful Muslims and take their lands for their own gain. However, nothing could be further from the truth. Pilgrims to the Holy Land before the First Crusade were usually unarmed and peaceful, but they were being attacked and robbed. One German pilgrimage in 1064 lost over two-thirds of its number between the coast and Jerusalem. Of 7,000 pilgrims, only 2,000 returned home. Many nobles, knights and Christian peoples spent their entire fortunes and plunged their estates at home into debt to fund the Crusades. Nor could or did Crusaders conquer new territory. That was forbidden by the Church. A Crusade could only take back what was once Christian and make pilgrimages, especially to Jerusalem, possible again. A Catholic cannot force anyone to become a Christian. In fact, a person must do so of his own free will or the conversion is not valid. Christians can only engage in peaceful missionary work, unlike Muslims, who can and do force people to convert to Islam. So, how did the Crusades come about? In 610, something was to happen that would affect the whole of the Christian world. Islam, which means submission to God, was founded by Muhammad when he claimed to have had revelations from Allah. Muslim expansion was fairly rapid, and before the death of Muhammad, they had already conquered much of the Arabian Peninsula. The expansion, therefore, of the Islamic world um, was very quick and it was all by the sword. It was all ex military expansion. Um, it's, it's very different than uh, Christians are, uh, tend to think of the expansion of, of Christianity as being led by missionaries going into, say, the New World uh, or um, in, the, uh, in the ancient world, the Christian missionaries that spread out all over the Roman Empire, um, like St. Paul. By 640, Islam had not only conquered the whole of Arabia, but also the Holy Land. In 661, the Muslim conquest of Persia was virtually complete, and they had occupied the Christian lands of North Africa to Tripoli. In the early 8th century, Islam was pushing the Byzantines back in Asia Minor, then captured the whole of North Africa. By 732, Islam had conquered most of the Iberian Peninsula and was pushing up into France. By 1095, two-thirds of Christian lands were now in Muslim hands. 
They had occupied most of the Asia Minor and were at the walls of Constantinople. The Byzantine Emperor did the only thing he could, call on the Pope for help, and Pope Urban II, at the Council of Clermont, responded. A crusader was not a paid mercenary. He went to war to save Christendom and to get Jerusalem and Christian lands back. They were volunteers. Their only goal was their faith, and all crusaders were offered a plenary indulgence by the Pope. The unusual thing about cru crusades were that they were penitential wars, which is to say that the crusaders were believed to be actually fighting as acts of penance. Now, you do not take on a penance because you are told to. Of course, your confessor might uh, tell you to put on But in the end, you yourself have to decide to take on a penance. And that meant that crusaders, unlike the participants in any other kind of war, were volunteers. After fighting their way through Muslim-occupied lands, they finally got Jerusalem back in 1099. However, even now people are disparaging their immense achievement. Here is Professor Phillips. There's a very often quoted line about horses and knights wading in blood up to their knees. This is a good soundbite, in a sense it fits. Um, Western writers wanting to talk about liberating Jerusalem and, and, and their military success. But in reality, it's an exaggeration. Crusading went on for many centuries and most certainly saved Europe and the New World from becoming Muslim. The Battle of Lepanto, for which Pope Pius V asked the whole of Christendom to pray the rosary for victory, is a great example of a successful crusade, as was the Reconquista in Spain, for which the Christians once again claimed Spain for Christianity. For further study on what really happened in the Crusades, please see EWTN's four-episode docudrama series. This is particularly suitable for schools and homeschooling. Please see the links below.